to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, today's video is going to be more comparative in a way, to address the little known similarities between melanotan 2 or MT2 and PT141, also known as bremelanotide. Now the biggest differences between the two lie in their clinical journey. Think of them as like fraternal twins or close cousins. One became a reality show chef and the other became a rocket scientist. Sure, they've gone their separate ways, but from a genetic standpoint, they're very, very similar. And this is a little known fact and something not really discussed, not really even in the research, which as you'll see will make sense in a way. Please keep in mind if you're looking for content on each peptide specifically, indications and their clinical data, just see my videos on the topic, you can look them up on the YouTube channel. I've done updated videos on MT1 and MT2 and in the past I've spoken about PT141 on a few occasions. They're truly fascinating peptides and if you watch my recent video on melanotan 1, also known as Afamelanotan, Melanotide, you'll see how in some cases these melanocortin receptor agonists may be truly life-changing for some. Now a big company involved in production of these melanocortin peptide technologies is called Palatin Technologies, and we've talked about how research on MT2 is discontinued and how PT141 gained FDA approval branded as Vilisi for HSDD, also known as Hypoactive Sexual Desire Disorder, particularly in premenopausal women. And if you go to the company's website, which I'll list in my references below, you'll see they are entirely dedicated to this facet of peptide research and are even in the process of analyzing PT-141 as an adjunctive treatment to GLP-1 agonists for management of obesity, think in addition to semaglutide for instance. And although their biggest release was obviously Vilisi, as among the commercial pioneers in this space, I imagine this isn't the last we'll hear about Palatin. So now let's address at the very minimum the structural differences between MT2 and PT-141, but before we do, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're looking for the best way to support a small peptide YouTuber like me, that's certainly the best way and I appreciate your support. Now as we discussed before, melanotan 2 is derived from alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone or alpha MSH, and it's considered a super potent cyclically shaped analog of such. And although MT1 is linearly shaped and more closely resembles the structure of alpha MSH, MT2 is a cyclic and truncated version of MT1. Now PT141, which came about after, is an analog of MT2 and thus resembles it closely. And as such, although research on MT2 was essentially disbanded due to erectile promoting qualities and unwanted sexual enhancement in a peptide intended for skin health, this is what essentially led to research on PT141 as there's quite obviously a market there. Now PT141 is a metabolite of MT2, and when we talk about metabolites in pharmacology, they're essentially compounds produced resulting from initial metabolism of different compounds or parent compounds. So breakdown of one substance leads to formation of another, which can be biologically active and even have distinct pharmacological characteristics when compared to the parent molecule. And in this case, PT141 is identical to melanotan 2, with exception of a C-terminal amine group replaced with a hydroxyl group. I'll put up a side by side with melanotan 2 on your left and PT141 on your right. For the Australians, you can just reverse that. Just kidding. But without me pointing it out, can you see the difference here? Okay, now I'll show you where the change is. Very minimal, right? And I think one thing that's commonly overlooked is how similar these peptides are. And so their biggest differentiating factors, besides some other pharmacokinetic info which we'll get into in a little bit, are their proposed uses, but we can probably learn a little bit about each by looking at the research done on the other. And so MT2 was predominantly evaluated in the context of skin tanning because there are clinical scenarios in which this could be beneficial. However, MT2 was discontinued in clinical research pretty much due to the unwanted and seemingly unpredictable nature of the aphrodisiac effects it produced. Not to mention, it was more worrisome when it came to cancer than its less potent friend, melanotan 1, which exhibits a pretty favorable side effect profile, non-malignant findings, and has been FDA approved for assisting people with EPP, or erythropoietic protoporphyria, obtain pain-free light exposure, and is also being investigated in the context of acute ischemic stroke. Now, PT-141 was looked at predominantly in the context of sexual arousal via agonism of melanocortin-3 and 4 receptors, and is clearly being investigated currently in other contexts as well. We already mentioned obesity. 
Some men with poor response to Viagra have found PT-141 to be preferable, and it's been found to be generally well tolerated. Some may experience flushing, and it's been shown to have pretty quick onset of action and solid intranasal efficacy. And interestingly, as we hinted at before, PT-141, unlike alternative methods of sexual enhancement, acts through these melanocortin receptors rather than the vascular system, which is unique and fascinating. And thankfully, since PT-141 is FDA-approved via Viagra, Lisi, we can easily access some pharmacokinetic data, which is, with experimental peptides, oftentimes hard to get your hands on. It's got a half-life of about 2.7 hours, and if you review the FDA prescribing data, which I'll link below, you can even see different frequently prescribed medications and the extent to which these interact with PT-141. And some side effects to keep in mind, which have been exhibited and also which we've discussed previously, include transient increases in blood pressure, nausea, and even focal hyperpigmentation which isn't particularly uncommon, however the FDA recommends discontinuing the product if you develop these focal areas of darkening. Nausea, flushing, injection site reaction, and headaches are among the more common, less serious adverse effects, the flushing of which appears to be worsened by alcohol consumption. And like melanotan 2, PT-141 is a cyclic peptide. And although predominantly evaluated in rodents, the half-life of MT2 is thought to be between 1.5 and 2 hours, a bit shorter than that of PT-141, but understandably not far off and also unconfirmed. Overall, the point of this video is to exhibit how two structurally similar compounds can possess two different fates. And among the big three melanocortin peptides, MT1, MT2, and PT141, only MT2 is the ugly duckling that hasn't gained FDA approval, and in a way it's been clinically at least abandoned. Meanwhile, MT1 and PT141 are still in their development pipelines, branching out and being evaluated in different contexts, seeing how they can alleviate suffering in one way or another. All in all, I hope you enjoyed this video. We've been on a melanocortin kick lately, I'm well aware, but I hope I'll see you back here. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hated it, give us a thumbs down. But most importantly, have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.